Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to another episode of our podcast series on Voices of Widows. My name is Bolanle Olanrewaju, a widow and member of Advocacy for Widows Empowerment Foundation, an NGO based in Lagos State, Nigeria, where widows' welfare is paramount. Today, we shall examine what life is as a widow. Widowhood has been a normal part of life circle, particularly for widows. It has a happy event. It is not a happy event. And there are many adverse consequences in terms of both physical and psychological health. However, most widows appear to adjust successfully in the long run. There are many challenges we face as widows. Thus, coping with bereavement and widowhood is not to be underestimated. Let's take a listen to some widows' experiences. Good day. My name is Olufike Olafu Walker. I, I became widowed on the 25th of July, 2020. Well, um... I didn't have a good marital experience because it has it was issues from day one till date. My little son was being manipulated by his siblings, his elder sister, who never wanted him to marry somebody like me because of my level of exposure and academic qualification. We the matters got worse and he abandoned myself and my brother. And left the house. All along I knew he was sick. I kept on talking to him. But at some point he stopped calling me, stopped picking my calls and all that. And when he passed, that fateful day he passed. That was the beginning of a turnaround. His siblings, everybody said I killed him. That I I killed their brother and that they were going to deal with me. Some of the challenges I encountered as a widow was the fact that I had been called one, which I didn't want to be called. It was the fact that some persons approached me. I mean, it looks like they were always trying to sympathize with me, which I never wanted anybody to do. How often do I remember him? Once in a while, most especially when I see somebody do things that are similar to what he normally do, a background of marriage. But I thank God for the opportunity to be alive. Thank you. My name is um, Mrs. Owobi Maria Atso. I've been a widow for the past um, nine years. That's since 2012. Oh, that was my husband. My late husband was he was a nice person. He was fun to be with. Um, and he, he, he always likes to be himself. He does not pretend about anything. The way he sees it, he gives it to you. So I didn't really have... Uh, issues with him. He was really nice. He was nice. Well, the reaction of his um, family, it wasn't easy for them initially. Every one of us had the shock. It, it came suddenly. The news of his death came suddenly to one of us. So that shock affected them. It also affected me. And then initially there was this um, resentment and biased feeling. But eventually things worked out. And um, the way they should, and everything went normally. Mm. How often 
Do I remember my husband? I as often as possible, every moment of the day, so long as I live, I still remember him. And there's no way I can forget, except otherwise. But till now, I still remember him. I still remember everything about him. And so long as I see my children, everything about them, the resemblance, they move around, they talk like him. So I, I always remember him. I always remember him. But I thank God, I believe it is well with him. Thank you. My name is Rosemary Elogene Emu and I've been widowed for 11 years. I lost him January 13, 2010. He had renal failure and he battled for his life for two years and finally he gave up the ghost January. And since he died, life has never been the same with the children. I have to struggle on my own to survive because family rejected me, friends, they deserted me and my in-laws, they left me. So the struggle continued after his death. So I was, I've been trying to find my feet by doing all sorts of things. I engage in different training just to meet up. So life has never remained the same since he died because we spent virtually everything he had on his health before we lost him. So the challenges I have now is in the society, people see you as somebody with ill luck, so friends are nowhere to be found. So I've been trying my best to stand on my feet and to give my children the best, but it has not been easy. So I always remember him because he doesn't play with his family. He's a man that stood by us, me and I and the children. He has been a good father. He has been a good husband before his death. And up up to now, the family for 11 years, I've not set my eyes on them. Before I came back from my parents' place for the morning period, they've made away with all the things in the house, the furniture, all what he has. So that has how life has been as a widow. Thank you very much. My name is Amina Tomogolande Yusuf. I've been 11 years a widow, and the reaction of my in-laws was not really encouraging, it was a bad one. My husband, my late husband was a lovable somebody, he was a wonderful husband. And um, it's been a long. Well, I have a lot of challenges, financial challenges, emotional challenges, medical challenges, challenges for my in-laws, my friends, the church, and so on. I remember my husband always. My name is Ola Yenka Olunuse. I have been widowed for like two years and some months. Ah. My late husband. Hey, oh. that man, a good man. Oh. My late husband is a very good man. A man with a beautiful soul. A man with good characters. A man after God's own heart. One of the few of his kind. He was a very, very, very good man. Loved by colleagues, loved by church members, loved by me and his children and everyone around him. He was really indeed a good man. <laughs> That's something I don't like remembering. I don't like walking down that memory lane. Uh, while my husband was alive, we were cordial, we were friends, and they could all come around me without them. Um, um, well, how do I put it? Without preferring one to another. But immediately he died. I saw the other side of my in-laws. They all turned their backs on me, uh, segregated me from the family, abandoned me and my children. And uh, they tried to take the little my husband left from me. I thank God because God stood by me. To be sincere and candid, there's no day that passes by that I don't remember him. There's no day. There's no day. These past two years, I've remembered him on daily basis. There will be something that will strike my, my mind back to when he was alive. It might be while doing the chores. It might be while in the bathroom. It might be while washing. Because, you know, he was always there, always helpful with the children, with the chores, and it spoiled me to distraction. Um, a lot of things that I didn't know how to do, I had to learn them. 
after his demise. So there's no day that goes by. He washes my clothes. I don't have problem. Before I wake up, he does all those things for me. Uh, selfless. He was selfless. And, um, you know, there's no how you won't remember those things. I remember him every day. Welcome back. You are still on to Voices of Widows. We will continue to hear more experiences witnessed from more widows. Stay tuned. My name is Onua Fumilayo. Mm, I've been a widow for almost 10 years now. I've, my late husband, yes, he was a gentleman, God-fearing, and a very prudent man, and at the same time, generous, yes. The reaction of his family, my in-laws, after his uh, demise was so brutal and um, unfriendly. He sprouted some things in me, gave me some kind of strength from within. It makes me more stronger, determined, focused, and at the same time, I was having a feeling like that of a wounded lion. Yes. But at the end of all these emotional adjectives, I was determined that my children will survive, that I will follow up to the latter concerning their education well-being from where it stopped. So I focused on God. So I waved them aside. I never even want to remember that they were existing. So like... That was part of the experience. I passed through them. That's my in-law. Everything they were talking about has just to do with the property. Then I stood up and I told them that to help with all of you. And ever since then, God has been faithful. It wasn't easy. For the first two years of his death, I don't look at mirror. I leave my house as early as possible, though I had a challenging job. So that gave me an opportunity as a hiding place. So I was doing the work even more than expected of me. Even though the income is not really anything to write home about, I was just doing it to push aside the trauma and to let them know that without them, there is God and God is a majority. My husband, Hmm. Maybe sometimes if there is any preaching in church that has to do with widows and all that, I don't remember him for anything. I don't. Because I'm such a person that I dream big, but I take things slow and steady. And I believe in God. And I've already I've taken God as my husband and the father of my children. So that has not really given me the opportunity. And God has been faithful. It's not as if I'm living by and so, But I just believe that one day I will soon go and meet, I will still go and meet him wherever he is. Do you understand? So we are all here to play our part and to live. My major concern is for my children to live to a greater height in life, even beyond where their father stopped me. I was out there looking for one day how my children will survive within the 40 days after the barrier. I was looking frantically search for how to because my do you understand what I'm saying? I'm you God did it. So I've not really been able to, through that, I've not really been able to be sitting down and be saying, I wish for when he was alive and all that. So, so I give God all the glory. I give God the glory. I give God all the glory. I know I'm not here where I'm supposed to be. Wherever we are, we always see once more from God. But I know God has been faithful and he will take me and my children to higher places. Thank you, Sister Bola. Oh, yeah. 
life as a widow for Nigerian women is compounded by cultural demands of widowhood. Many are stigmatized, blamed for their husband's death, and displaced from their marital homes. The duration and requirements of mourning vary from culture to culture and from in-laws to in-laws. I hope you have enjoyed today's topic, Life as a Widow. Join us for the concluding part of this topic on our next podcast. This production is brought to you by Entertainment Consults Limited and my producer remains Mr. Willie Workman Oga. For partnership and counseling, please call plus 234-818-278-6623 or plus 234-80-550-570-64. I still remain yours. Bolanli Olan Rewaju. Thanks for listening and bye for now. Always here by your side. Everything will be alright. So much pain and tears. So much pain and tears.